Hello, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jesse Almodovar, and today I'll be cutting our model, Steven. Now Steven today will be doing a detached haircut, which will be formed to a pompadour side, side part. Um, we wanna thank Steven for being here. We also wanna thank uh, Exclusive Barber Supply for letting us use their facility uh, for, to shoot this uh, video for the Andy's Clipper Company. Let's go ahead and get started. And today's haircut, we'll be using three of Andy's um, cordless clippers. The first one I'll be using is the BGR Plus series, um, detachable blade model. Um, with, because it's detachable, because it's cordless, I am free of motion from the wall. And so for barbers that are on the go, or for those that are at, just at the shop, you can move around with the freeness without being attached to the cord. The other cordless clipper that we're going to be working with today is the Supra 120 Ions. It's an ionic battery for long lasting life for two hours, hence the 120. And it also is very lightweight and ergonomic, so it's very comfortable in my hand without putting a lot of fatigue on the joints. And to do our cleanup work, we're going to be using the Andy Slimline Pro. Uh, again, very ergonomic, lightweight uh, trimmer, but yet with the power of the rotary motor, you can clean up with very good effectiveness. The nice good thing about this uh, the Slimline Pro also is that it can be a uh, zero gap for I know the barbers that like it very, very tight. Um, the, the blade can come off and be gapped that way as well. So let's go ahead and get started with Steven. Uh, for this cut, what I usually try to do uh, is start with the bulk on top. Um, we could do the side work as well, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the top and just take a little off the top using a clipper over finger technique. I like to make sure that the client is nice and, hair is nice and wet. So it's nice and evenly wet throughout the, throughout the whole cut. And since we know that for this hairstyle, we're gonna be flipping it up and over at the end, you wanna be careful on how you over direct your hair. You don't wanna bring it too forward and then cut this way at the length. You wanna bring it at least at a 90 degree angle, if not further back, depending on how high you want your pompadour effect to be. I'll be attaching my triple lot blade to the BGR Plus in one hand with the uh, blade facing me and my comb in the other. Comb forward again. We're going to bring up straight up. Bring it to the side a little bit so you can see. It'll be straight up in front and come right. Cut just a little bit. Steven has been coming to the barbershop for quite some time, uh, so we appreciate him joining us today for this haircut, being able to be our hair model for this occasion. This maneuver is, um, you do have to get used to it a little bit, just like you would if you were using your clipper over um, excuse me, your shears and your fingers. That same technique that took a little bit of time to learn, this might be new for a lot of people. So using this particular um, way of cutting uh, might take a little bit to get used to. You have you know, your clippers in one hand, you still have your, your um, comb in the other. That's what you'd be usually flipping back and forth. So to have it stationary in one, it kind of just makes it easier and less going back and forth uh, through your hands, which is kind of a nice technique to use. And because I have uh, my blade so close to my hand, I don't have to worry about swinging around and hitting him in the face or hitting and messing up the rest of the cut. So if you hold it on the bottom, makes it nice and easy. Place it, uh, your comb in your fingers uh, like that.
And the same thing when you get to this particular um, side part, you do want this a little bit longer so it can be detached. And that's what makes it a detached haircut. This is gonna be extremely short, whereas in this side, we're actually gonna be blending this side together so it has a nice uh, flow and blend at this side. So when you are doing this side, make sure that your angle isn't so much so that it's taking off too much hair. The way we want his pomp, pomp to be at the end, uh, that length will add a little bit more height to that cut. So I think I'm done with the top. I'm gonna go ahead and work at the bottom. Um, since I do have my triple lot already on here, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, with a lower uh, fade. Now his fade is gonna come pretty high, but the actual balding part of it is gonna actually be on the lower side. You'll notice that I do drop down around the ear, but not in a hard uh, drop. It's not gonna be that low of a cut, but it will, will still be slightly angled uh, back towards the nape section uh, below the occipital bone. Now for this particular haircut, um, I am going to show you a technique of uh, putting in levels um, that I, I feel helps, especially if you're just starting off uh, with doing fades. Um, sometimes when you're fading as you go, what could happen is if you're not, you don't know which level it is on one side compared to the other, you can end up tilting the, the fade just a little bit. So as I come up, it is kind of a straight up motion to take off a lot of that bulk, but right at the end, I will be using a C motion or flick motion to kind of get, make sure that that line is not hard put in. It'll be a little bit easier on the back end to take that out, even though we're putting in the levels. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my OA blade. And again, I'm gonna start on the side. Now, normally I, you wouldn't really do that much traveling around your a chair. The chair does move, it, circle, it you know, circles around for a reason. So go ahead and use that to your advantage as you're cutting. You know, less fatigue on your legs throughout the day. You know, if you're in a barber shop or if you're in a beauty shop, uh, salon, you don't wanna, you're already using a lot of your body to stand up. So might as well cut down on what you can, where you can. So these two clips are pretty close. The line is almost gone from the triple zero. Probably won't come out completely, but that's okay. We're gonna come back and clean it up a little bit later. And for the beginners, that's okay. Again, to keep yourself on a level plane, it makes it nice so you, when you come back down and clean it up, you still know where you can keep that fade completely even on both sides. After I went up about a quarter inch, I am going to switch to my one. And so you can see that what I'm doing, I'm going back and forth, going back and forth. When you're making those revolutions, you can kind of know where you are instead of jumping all around. You do one side, fade it up, do the other side, try to fade it up. Um, again, that can, that can, although that's, that's a technique that if you want to use, that's okay, but that can contribute to an uneven fade at the end. So again, about a quarter of an inch up with your one blade.
forgot to mention that at the beginning of every process when you're doing uh, a service, it is good that either your client come in with no product in their hair or go ahead and offer them um, a shampoo at the beginning of your service. This will prevent any wear and tear or excess wear and tear on your clippers or shears uh, so you can, the longevity of them can keep, uh, keep going. Uh, from the one, I am going to go ahead and attach the, uh, let me go ahead and attach the one and a, one a because I have it available to my, uh, depending on what you have, you might not have all these clips. So some of them uh, might be missing in your set. You might just have a one and one and a half or two, and you can still uh, do those levels. Um, those sections might be a little bit bigger depending on the jump. And then you can come back and fade them out if needed uh, with an adjustable clipper. With, like the ions, or um, if you had the masters, or fades, or envies, uh, to go ahead and, and, and adjust, use an adjustable clipper to take out the fade. From 1A, we'll go to a one and a half. So now that we're done with the 1A, I'll go ahead and attach my one and a half clip, detachable blade to BGRs. And again, depending on your haircut, you might, uh, these levels might be a little bit different. For normal fade, um, mid fade, you might not be this high. So that all depends as you continue to grow in your, in your career, you'll know what type of fade you're doing, how high to bring it, uh, which is nice. I'll show you what's going on back here in the back. So we're almost getting into the parietal ridge area. As I start to move up in the haircut, uh, my C motion will be a little bit more dramatic instead of taking it straight bowl cut at the end. Now because we are doing a detached haircut on this particular side, once I'm done with this particular revolution, I will come back and knock down a little bit more there so it has complete detachment. As you can see, compared to this side, I am going to do a lot more flicking because we are going to blend that in with a clipper over comb technique. So while we are on the top, I'm going to take that down. I'm going to make sure the hair is nice and wet. Some people like to put clips on the side to make sure that it's not going to come over. So as you can see in this area right here, we're going to make sure that all those hairs come all the same level. And I am going to go ahead and do that with, uh, for this particular haircut, I am going to do that with the, the two attachable guard or clip. So to do that maneuver, again, you want to make sure either you, have, you do have a clip in if you want to, or wet the hair 
Um, some people will actually will put a little bit of gel just to make sure it holds. Um, usually I just find that if you wet it and lay it over, uh, for the most part you should be okay. It does require a little bit of a steady hand to get that straight, straight line though. But if you do see any fine little baby hair sticking out, we'll go ahead and touch that up right at the end and make sure that all the little hairs are sticking out. But we're gonna make sure that this fade is complete. We're gonna work our way up with the levels and come back down and do any kind of adjustments we need with the fade. So now that I'm, I'm at this area where I'm blending from the long hair to the short, this particular area I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a clipper over comb technique. I'm gonna go ahead and reattach my uh, triple lock uh, blade to the clippers. And since Steven has blonder hair, I am gonna go, well, it's dirty blonde, it's really kind of dark right at the moment, but uh, I am gonna use a black comb. You want it to have contrasting colors to see as much as possible um, to take out that bulk in the haircut. Again, I know that I'm not gonna come straight over with this cut, so you gotta be careful with cutting off too much length here. I am gonna kind of comb it back into the direction that needs to be cut so I don't cut off the wrong hair. So, so just come, comb it down, we're gonna come back straight up. When I am doing clipper over comb techniques, I have seen a lot of people go like this, up. When you're going up with this technique, you could be hot knocking hair out of the combs. So coming straight across, keeping your clipper on, well, you can call them the tracks, like a train track, and going straight across is usually the best technique so they can hit against the side of the comb instead of coming up, up the comb length. I'm gonna take down a little bit of this back area here, make sure that this blends in as well. Okay. So that area seems nice and blended together from the length and the top. We can go ahead and we'll play with this a little bit more at the end if you feel like you need to blend it a little bit more, but that seems good for right now. So we'll go ahead and use our, our Supras uh, 120s to go ahead and we'll kind of readjust and kind of go back down. Um, if you're the type that likes to just use uh, your BGRs or whatever detachable clippers to fade completely, that's, that's a very good technique to use too. Uh, many have come to like that. It's a lot faster. You don't have to worry about the clips coming back and forth as far as fading. Um, but I do want to introduce this as well because I know a lot of barbers still do use an uh, adjustable blade. So this is a nice uh, tool to work with. Um, again, because it's cordless, it frees you of uh, being attached to the wall. As I'm doing this particular movement right here, I knew this was a two. So I'm going from a two to a one and a half. So I do attach my one guard to the uh, Supras. I mean, I'm using the Andy's Purple Magnetic Guards. I have slightly modified them so they can fit on the Supras, but the Supra does come, from, come with uh, four attachable guards, uh, comb guards to fit on this that come in the case that you can use as well. Always keep your cool care close. So with my one guard attached, I am gonna open up my supers all the way to the one position. So that gives me about a one and a half. And again, with a flicking motion, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out any bulk weight that I see in that section.
The Supras do go from a 4-0 to a 1 position. I am going to try to cut on the side a little bit more. I'm so used to working with the mirror, which is something that you do want to get used to if you are doing a fade. Your mirror is your friend. It tells you all the secrets, which you've missed, the little bulk areas that you're going to do. The other thing a lot of people, some people use is your camera. You're going to like this haircut. You're going to want to put it on Instagram. You want to show it off. The camera doesn't lie. It's going to show you every little area that you need to work on. So go ahead and the area that I just did from the two to a one and a half um, is blended down. So now I'm going to go back down from the one area to the one A or one area. So from again, one and a half to a one. So I'll go ahead and, and um, the purple magnetic guards do come with a half. I do like to use uh, the half guard. Or in this case, it does say zero. Again, attach zero guard to your supras or adjustable blade clipper you're going to use it in the open position so if you can see a little bit of the weight line there we're going to attempt to take that out Supras do have a nice adjustable lever. It is in the back of the Supra instead of on the side, like most other adjustables, which makes it unique. Uh, but I find that after I got used to adjusting from our masters to this one, uh, using this technique or using it with my finger in the back does work a lot. I like it. Again, these will run for two hour runtime and have about a, an hour charge time. But I find that even in a busy day at work, the battery life is lasting. Uh, between the combination between the three, which is why I decided to use uh, all three of these, uh, use the combination of them during a haircut, you're not using these straight for two hours at a time and they do last you a very good substantial amount of time, depending on how much you are using them. But again, it's a two hour runtime. All three of these clippers are a rotary motor clipper. So it's good for wet and dry hair. So it has the power to get through the wet hair like we did with uh, Steven on top with our BGR models. But even as light as these are, um, if I decided to use these doing the same technique on top, you could. You'll notice that once you graduate from your, your mannequin to a live uh, person, um, unlike our mannequins that we practice with at school that have a completely flat surface, your clientele that you're going to be working on, learning on as you get into a salon or barbershop, as you're doing your fades, uh, the contours in their head can affa affect the way that that particular fade might look. It might be the same cut length, but you might need to go back in there and lighten a certain area just because uh, the contour uh, went in on a certain area, came out in a certain area. So you will be constant adjustments. Which is why doing the levels at first, when you're first starting out, you're keeping, trying to keep that even plane from one side, from the left side to the right. So that helps out a lot.
Okay, and check your mirror. A lot of times you'll see a lot of barbers, when they're using their comb, or they're using this, the fade technique, or they're doing a fade, you'll see them combing down like this a lot. It serves two purposes. One, um, the hair can be moved out of place when you're moving and taking out uh, the bulk of the hair and cutting. So you want to knock the hair back into place, back down, so that it's coming against the clippers the right way. And two, this helps to also knock down any loose hair that's in the, in the fade of two as well. Depending on how tight you go, a lot of times I actually do I like to use a, 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 a brush to knock out that hair. Because when you're doing this tight of a cut, you want to make sure that all the hair that you're cutting is cuttable hair, not just dark because it's, it's hair that's been laying on your client's head. Okay, I think that that level is pretty suffice. So your super, your supers do open up to a one. So you'll see a little bit of a weight line still here. So you can go ahead and knock that out in the open position. funny up until recently as your skills as a barber or stylist for doing fades you know get better and better you pick up a lot of knowledge from the different people that you you look up to or people that you meet in your continuing education classes and there is a technique that a lot of barbers do use where they are are picking up their blade or putting their blade to the side just a little bit and I honestly didn't have a word for that I didn't know what that was what you could call that uh, but thank you to Kenny Duncan for coming up with a specific name for that technique or usage your clipper calibration you know you can get still a different look or feel from your clippers as you lift up or rake or even when you're close to the side and use the side of your clipper so a lot of us will do that unknowingly not, well, knowingly, because that's how you get the, the fade nice. But uh, I appreciated learning from him a little bit more about that technique. Not only the technique, but actually having a name for the technique. Since a lot of us do uh, do the technique and without knowing that we were doing it. Okay.
All right, now that that area is taken care of, I'm going to work on the bottom area. I'm going to lower my uh, supras to the triple or four aught size all the way down. And I can come in and take any little areas that I feel like need a little bit more work. Again, there's many Andy's products that will be able to accomplish this particular hairstyle. I chose these today um, because of the mobility factor. Um, I really appreciate that. I, I barber not only at the shop, but I do clients in their lo different locations. And so to be able to pack up my, my clippers into a bag and not have to worry about a bunch of cords or cutting in a place where I have to find a, a, a socket to plug into, um, really does come in handy and has come in handy. <laughs> and the longevity of the battery life so far I've found to be um, really good. Okay. okay. So with this particular cut, I do have a um, five watt clip that will be attached to my BGR models. We're just going to get a little closer on the bottom. You could use your trimmers for this as well, a lot of people do. But thankfully we do have an outliner blade and a 5 op blade uh, that get extremely close. Um, you don't have to put the wear and tear on your, your trimmers and do this particular movement. Use your trimmers for outlining, that's what they're made for. Leave the big bulk cuts for the bigger tools. So it's well worth the investment. Because the supers come down to a four out, it's an easy blend from the five to a four. Now that we're done with Steven's cut, or at least the fade part, we are going to do a nice little edge up around the side using our Slimline Pros. So I'm almost styling the hair where it's going to be at for the, for the style part. And not everybody will like a nice front edge, but we do do that on Steven. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. A nice sharp edge up in front. Remember to try to keep your edge up as natural as possible, unless otherwise instructed in your client consultation that I'm sure everybody is doing. And if you're not doing a client consultation at the beginning when you're first running into a customer or learning about them, you should. It's gonna prevent a lot of headaches 
and it's going to start to build a rapport between you and that client. Ask them questions, 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 questions. Remember, if, especially if it's your first time doing them or second time or whatever, get the reminders from them. It helps them to feel very involved in their haircut, which is a good thing. You don't want to turn a person around or finish with a haircut and that's not what they wanted. So client consultation is very vital to our procedure, whether you're a barber or a cosmetologist. So after doing a little bit of beard work on Steven, trimming that up, doing a little bit of touch-up work on his fade, we're going to go ahead and add your favorite styling product, whatever that might be. You don't need much. You can do a classic pompadour look with this. I know with Steven, we like to do a little bit more of a edgier look, not so combed down. So after doing that, here you have your finished end product, a nice uh, fade, a detached haircut with a oh. modern pompadour uh, look on the top. We thank you guys again for joining us. Thank you for giving the opportunity to uh, make this video for you as well. Again, we want to thank also uh, Exclusive Barber Spot for having us come here and uh, put the video together at the location. So again, thank you very much. My name is Jesse, this is Steven, our hair model. Have a great day.